think that means doing something challenging um or maybe even not doing something challenging even entertaining the idea of doing something challenging and, and thinking that it, it might be something worthwhile uh <laughs> i mean yeah i'm ambitious because i actually think it's possible maybe to um to i know have a better world and then i think maybe if i look back at some of the things i've done in the past um they could be evidence evidence for having been ambitious what kind of things yeah like there's a few things that come to mind so um in the first um since my first half of my career was um was racing sailboats um and so with my first passion um it's why i went to um, mechanical engineering for undergrad um it's why i went and worked with team new zealand um for the 2003 defense it's why i moved to rhode island um and to work for a, a I guess at that point a startup um, business in the marine industry um so yeah there's a lot of uh, stuff in there and then i think the second half of my career um simplifying this a lot is basically transitioning from that marine industry focused sailing career to um one where i contribute my strengths and interests to um the collective um and, and that's been the journey of almost the last 10 years and some things along that path have been pretty challenging. And so I think without some ambition, um, I might have given up and got a bit more conventional. It's tough to really like, you know, delineate one specific thing that maybe, you know, tipped me over the edge to being ambitious versus not um so i guess in some ways i that's a long-winded way of saying that maybe i've always been ambitious um but i also believe that there's yeah there's things along the way that probably reinforce that you know my parents were very much of the ilk of um um yeah do well at school and um then you know anything's possible um and so I think that just very simple principles sort of informed how they interacted with me and how they pushed me or, or didn't. I think I get told constantly that, um, that, you know, I'm much more ambitious than most other people are also. Um, Why do you think people say that to you? I think it's because I am doing things that maybe they don't have the courage to do themselves and 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 honestly i think that's for so many reasons right like we all have um our environments that we either have to maintain or respond to or nurture or whatever and um and for whatever reason i'm in this position where i'm pretty free of some of those things and so i kind of have maybe some license to do things that um others don't but you know there's a, a pros and cons of that obviously so is there anything that would enable you to be more ambitious, do you think? Um, I think if, you know, if, if I was to want something to help on this journey, I don't necessarily know that it's um, a need to be more ambitious. I think it might be to be more resilient or to be more... Um, consistent or even maybe even more focused i'm wondering whether i could be more ambitious um or whether it's that i'm already ambitious enough and it's more about the execution or the um, confidence perhaps to um really really be fully committed to pursuing something that is ambitious having been in in high performance sport when i was here in new zealand i think maybe i had a um particular lens on yeah ambition around high performance and you know New Zealand competing on the world stage and, and yachting um so that was in some ways that was my worldview it, it seemed quite ambitious and I think 
you know, New Zealand, I would probably look back and say New Zealand's always been very ambitious in terms of how we've shown up on the world stage and how at the time we went maybe closer to three and a half million. I don't think we're quite four million when I left. Um, people that we've always sort of, yeah, fought above our weight class or what it, you know, choose the analogy. Sort of shifting my focus to coming back. Um, I've definitely noticed and been around a lot of people that have aspirations for us to be um, much more progressive on addressing sort of the issues of our time. Um, so I feel that and see that. Um, I think that there's a couple of things holding us back that we are um, as a country in some ways quite risk adverse or not in some ways there's sort of this maybe there is a change that we're not kind of as willing to be different at the moment and as I start to think about that and sort of you know part of my journey this year has been sort of you know delving into the economics of you know why we are in this situation you know why we have a global pandemic why we have climate um destruction and devastation um and understanding or developing a, a greater understanding about the economics behind that um you know, as a country in the 80s we made all these choices that made us more connected with the global economy and um global institutions and such and so we actually yeah, you know, and this is, I think, also understood in business, right, where um, over time, competitors tend to become the same. It's sort of like a homogenizing effect. And in some ways, I worry that, you know, from what I said, just previously mentioned that New Zealand's in this place where it's actually quite hard for us, for us to be different on a really deep level. Like we can be different on a surface level in terms of like leadership and kindness and team of five million. And um, and lockdowns, which no question have um, been, you know, uh, incurred a lot of suffering for some people. But on net, um, we were able to do that because it really only stopped one industry um, and its tracks, um, and we had others. But you know, do we have the ability? Do we have a permission from sort of the the global like just like the foreign interests that now sort of we're so linked to to actually be as different as maybe we might want to be or does, does that make sense <laughs> I, I feel like there's there are some inhibitors now that maybe there haven't there weren't previously do you, do you feel yourself pulled in any particular direction in terms of where to kind of express your ambition now that you're back home? Absolutely, um, I do. And um, and it may come across at first um, blush as being very general um, as opposed to focused, but I'm going to try and make a case that it is in fact focused. Um, so I think... Um, in, in a way to describe it um, as what it's not. So I think there's lots of people who are ambitious in New Zealand that want to create something or will create something in response to this ambition, whether they start an entity or write a book or sort of some very outward sort of um, tangible manifestation of their ambition, um, which I would sort of argue is quite focused. Um, I'm not interested in that because um, I've developed this perspective that um, that thinking is very solution oriented thinking. And um, I've definitely this year, if not sooner, fell in love with the idea of, well, to say the quote, you know, fall in love with the problem, not the solution. And practically for me, that means being a sort of source of energy in New Zealand that helps um, individuals and, and, and organizations understand their issues, their root issues, their context better, and by doing so, um, help them go through a process that um, 
ultimately then leads to um, developing better solutions that are more able to be implemented. You know, I mean, that, that may sound really theoretical or abstract, but, you know, I just think that, um, you know, maybe taking an example of climate change or, um, or something as an example, you know, we've had a lot of awareness about this at a level since the 70s, if not earlier. But, you know, if you look at the output, you know, the, the trailing metrics and all of these things, you know, we haven't made any impact on this at all. And so the question underlying that is, well, why not? What was it about um, us or our approach, um, the way that we came up with solutions or even just how we defined our problems that, um, that has, not, has made no material impact on those training metrics that we're ultimately trying to um, influence? You know, I personally want to live um, in healthy relationship with myself, with others and with the land and um, that shouldn't be particularly ambitious, but I think in the way that we're living as a global society at the moment, that is a really big gap. Um, so, you know, I'd like to claim that it is very ambitious. I would love for other people to at least see value in that ambition and, um, and, to appreciate that there is a big gap and maybe to um, sort of start their journey along this path of awareness and belief and capability to sort of all prerequisites to them taking action to being, being part of a change, but um, not seeing change as, or learning or growing and understanding that change isn't um, something to be so, you know, scared or uncertain about, but that it's something that um, we can um, participate in, that we sort of have some agency in, and that by doing so, um, we're going to sort of build confidence, our capacity to do things differently, and ultimately, um, you know, all we'll be able to live sort of more congruent, happy lives um and yeah i kind of want that for everyone so i truly believe everything must change like the education system is a classic example of something that um you know to realize my ambition um i would see as being just categorically different to what it looks like at the moment um because it's overly structured it's really narrow focused it's not enabling the growth of the whole person and it, so it's impossible i think not to invoke the work of carol dweck when we talk about this um and all of the things that we do um conventionally that diminish the growth mindset and our ability to to actually see a challenge as being something that we should step into as opposed to step away from. Everything at the moment in the world is driven by fear. You know, our economic system is around scarcity. Um, our governance is around power and our businesses, you know, um, you know, do things to collect capital, financial capital, um, so that we, you know, can use it and sort of have have power as a result like it's all for me based around fear and so um connecting that with the growth mindset piece like you know yeah it might be a little bit scary to put ourselves in situations that are going to challenge us um and we might not know the answer to but you know by doing so we we grow and develop and become um in some ways like better contributors um to the world you know, I haven't even maybe said like my most recent thing that was ambitious that I did, which was, you know, run 50 half marathons um, last year, you know, one in each state in the US. Like, that's an incredibly ambitious thing to do. But, you know, in some ways, I, I'm reflecting as you were talking about this idea that maybe people don't sort of share or, or um, talk about the things that they're ambitious about you know, in the future, but also things that I've done in the past that were ambitious. Like there's something about maybe our 
condition your environment in New Zealand, that sort of tall poppy syndrome, that minimization that we that we do here, um, that is yeah, influencing like that, not as big, not yeah, not leading with that. Oh yeah, I'm ambitious because I did this thing. Um, there's sort of some I don't know if it's humility or just some other form of resistance.